Hey everybody, I'm John Swantek. Welcome to the latest edition of Match Play on PGATour.com. It's a PGA Tour Network throwdown this week. Let's meet our contestants. Brian Katrick, the host of Teed Off on weekday mornings, whose show follows Fairways of Life, hosted by Matt Adams, who has the honor for topic number one. Charles Schwartzel's Masters victory was the second major championship out of the last three for South African Matt. Louis Oosthuizen at the Open Championship, Schwartzel at the Masters, which more impressed you, or is there another victory out there that got your attention? Well, I think both of those victories were incredibly impressive. But to go to the South African victory that I think has been the most impressive of all time, I'm going to go all the way back to 1961 when Gary Player became the first international to win a Masters. And how did he do it? He beat Arnold Palmer. Palmer taking a double bogey at the 18th hole. Player getting up and down from the bunker at 18 to win that Masters, it was incredibly impressive. And again, to become the first guy to do it as an international at Augusta National, to me, that was the most significant victory by a South African at the Masters. And Katrick, a lot of symmetry there. 50 years to the day from Gary Player's triumph at Augusta, Schwartzel wins. What's your take? Well, my, my take is we should have had a production meeting because it's the exact same answer. Because <laughs> Gary Player's win 50 years ago to the day open the door for Retief Goosen to win multiple U.S. Opens, for Ernie Els to win multiple U.S. Opens, for Trevor Immelman, for Louis Oosthuizen, for Charles Schwartzel. You know, Schwartzel grew up idolizing Ernie Els. They all grew up idolizing Gary Player. The player, the first non-American to win the Masters, the first South African to win the Masters, he's the one that started it all. Schwartzel's win was nice. Louis Oosthuizen's runaway win at the Open may have been even better. But player winning the first Masters was the best of them all. That's the one that uh, started it all for the South Africans who follow. Topic number one, obviously half. Brian uh, leads us off for topic number two. A lot of storylines at the Masters. Kate Tricky, you were there. Mickelson, really a non-factor. Martin Keimer missed the cut by a mile. Tiger charged but fell short. McElroy faded badly on Sunday. What was the biggest surprise to you? I was most surprised at Rory McIlroy shooting the 80. Even though he had done it before, he hadn't done it in the final round, and he looked so good for three rounds. For it to come apart the way it did, uh, maybe I'm more heartbroken than I am surprised, but that one right there, that was the most poignant, and that to me is the one we'll be talking about more in weeks and years to come after this. Of those four occurrences, McElroy's the one that had us talking the most. And Matt McElroy still had the lead yet with nine holes to play on Sunday. You know, the, the collapse by Rory McElroy was disheartening. It was very saddening, as Brian noted. But I wasn't really shocked by that. I actually was shocked. There were two things. I'll give you my second most shocked thing first, and then my last. The second most was the fact that Martin Keimer did miss the cut. Rounds of 78 and 72, yes. He struggled at Augusta National in the past as well, but the 2011 edition of Martin Keimer is not the same golfer that has played Augusta National in the past, only his results were the same. That was surprising to me, but the biggest surprise, the fact that people can now enter a lottery and possibly get tickets to the Masters for the weekend through Masters.com. I thought that was a shock. <laughs> uh, nicely done. I'm going to give that one to, uh, to Matt. And, uh, yeah, we'll look forward to that. Uh, maybe we'll all get to go to Augusta sometime. So Matt takes a one-up advantage heading into topic three. And it goes uh, to Mr. Adams. Australians very much in the mix at Augusta. Jason Day, Adam Scott, Jeff Ogilvy were all there. Aaron Baddeley won in uh, Los Angeles earlier this year. Adam Scott, of course, defending this week in San Antonio. Matt, who's the best Aussie out there right now? Well, I think if you look at it in current form, if we take a flashpoint right now this morning, I'm going to go with Jason Day. 52 of 72 greens, 39 of 56 fairways at the Masters. That was in front of any other Australian in the field. Finishes second, his first time ever playing at the Masters. Last year, he earns five top tens. He had his first PGA Tour victory at the Byron Nelson, tied for 10th at the PGA Championship, eight of six cuts in 2011, 24th in FedEx Cup points. You are watching not only the future of Australian golf in Jason Day, you're watching one of the kids that's going to carry the mantle of the game into the future. Wow, Matt Adams, armed and dangerous with research there, Katrick. Can you refute? No, I certainly can because I'm going to go to the scorecard on this. I'm going to go with the guy that finished birdieing five of his last seven holes and five in a row. Literally the guy that was playing the best golf at the end of the Masters 
just ran out of holes was Jeff Ogilvie. The next major championship we have is at Congressional. They've got brand new greens. You're going to have to hit the ball very high in order to hold them because they're going to be firm. Ogilvie can hit the ball as high as anybody. And, oh, by the way, he's won that tournament before. Jeff Ogilvie has shown me he's won major championships. He's won the next one. And I think he's got all the tools to win at Congressional. Katrick said it himself, uh, Jeff Ogilvie is streaky. I thought it was a coming out party for Jason Day. I'm with Matt Adams on uh, Topic 3. He wins it and beats, beats Brian Katrick in this week's installment of Match Play. You guys can uh, work this out on the PGA Tour Network. Thank you. Well played.